Hey, welcome to Evil's Comics. This guy right here is Evil Mike, and I got a review for you today from Marvel Comics. We're dealing with the Deadly Neighborhood Spider Man, issue number one. It is written by B. Earl and Taboo, art by Juan Fierro, and then um, and colors, and then letters by VCs Travis Lanham. Um, this was such a fun read. Um, it's it's monitored as a scary spooky book and and at the right time but I'm gonna say it's not really scary or spooky um, the aesthetics is it's there but as far as it being scary or spooky or even terrifying not at all it's just a fun story a different version of our friendly neighborhood spider-man but for some reason it's deadly neighborhood um, so let's get into it first off the art is fantastic it's probably my favorite thing in this book um, now we start off with Peter Parker and he's kind of narrating the story as always and he's kind of explaining about <clears throat> how if you met him and you know he's intelligent and you know this and that but at the same time he's telling you that he's funny he's always got like a quip on his lips type of thing and you don't want to ever meet him if he doesn't have like a funny thing to say kind of thing and at this time we see our, our new Spider-Man swinging in with his you know demonic looking version of himself um, not only does he have these this fire coming from his eyes his hands are like mangly and clawy looking but in his eyes you can see he's got like the spiral looking uh, like Isis that, that just keeps you know going forever um, but basically he is swinging through the city we get this badass spread right here um, and he is explaining that for some reason he is super pissed he doesn't understand why he's trying to figure out what's going on and he doesn't quite understand it nothing he never says anything about the aesthetics like his appearance or anything but he does feel like extra angry he compels himself to like he that this must be how the Hulk feels um, he does explain that he could get to the point where he could kill but he doesn't um, and he compares himself to like Punisher that that's the difference between the two that he's not that willing to go that extreme unless he absolutely has to um, but he does feel that the city like that things are different like the city's out to get him and you can see right here it's trying to eat him and, and he, he even explains that the spider-man persona he feels like is trying to get him and they do show that like his webbing is like making a trap and, and kind of closing him but eventually like I mean he, he's changing shape and just going down the spiral hole towards something that we don't know yet eventually he does wake up we do find out it's a dream um, and this is kind of where the book gets a little muddled because I am not super super current with spider-man um, I actually had to do some backward searching to see if I was missing some pieces but <clears throat> as you go forward there's going to be like some things that just aren't explained at the moment like where in the current time frame are we but back to the story so <clears throat> Uh, we find out he is in a lab with, uh, I think her name is Crystal, and they are basically working on an experiment, an experiment using sound and water, like Doppler, um, and they actually have a more scientific term for it, but they're basically using, like, sonar to do something else other than just, you know, find stuff in the water. Um, Peter has had this hypothesis for years that, that you know, this, this Doppler sound can be used for other things. And then this crystal comes along and they basically have the same type of thinking. Um, at this point, we kind of find out why he's in and out of dreams. It's because he's been doing all-nighters trying to crack the code on this new scientific experiment they're doing. As they're going through the experiment, Peter ends up finding a rock and he ends up like kind of kind of being drawn to it. We don't see where the rock comes from. It just kind of appears there. This kind of goes into my theory that the whole book is not stuck in a normal reality like since the beginning of the book and not just during his dream states but his regular states. He's not really in reality and we'll kind of, I'll kind of get you there. So the rock. The rock just appears and for some reason he, he, he picks it up and takes it with him. Um, at this point, I'm not sure if this is current, but Peter does have a butler. The butler comes and picks him up. 
and Peter wants, explains that he wants to go somewhere, but uh, I think eventually he changes it and he goes to the Santa Monica Pier. That's when we find out that he is in Pasadena, California. Um, I'm not sure if that's currently where Spider-Man is. Like I said, I'm a little behind on things. Um, but he does say that he's been going to this pier for a little bit and he's been playing a chess game with like this person that he's been playing with. Now, I'm not any familiar with this, this character. His name is Bird. But he does go to the Santa Monica Pier and he plays a chess match with this guy. And Peter is very distracted. For one, he's on very little sleep. And then he's had been having the weird dreams. Then the rock. Um, while he was in the car on the way to the Man Sa Santa Monica Pier, the rock started to show these like hieroglyphic symbols and stuff. Nothing comes out of it. It's shown right here. But he, every time he touches the rock, he senses like some familiar familiarity with the with the rock like the rocks trying to tell him or something tell him something um, this whole chess match with bird um, there's a deeper message that I wasn't able to pick up on either that or it's just like part one of the deeper message but I, ha I think it has something to do with what's going on but the basic message of the chess mass it chess match I'm sorry I'm having problems talking is that the pawns are the more important thing they're like the building blocks you know of the match and basically the way this guy always wins is he just views the chess match as a mountain versus a flat surface you know basically everything happens in the middle and he does the important stuff with the pawns um, as as he is explaining this Peter goes back into his dream state or we're assuming is his dream state but we every time he does in this book he's going to go back revert to his deadly neighborhood spider-man version with the glowing eyes and the the claw-like hands which they show quite often there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here it looks like we're looking at bits and pieces of the future um especially right here because peter says he see he's seen the future and like and he is the cause of it um like all these dead people and corpses the chess thing you know keeps coming back there's chess pieces he mentions you know like the actual game chess so that has something to do with what's going on but they all of a sudden he snaps back to reality he is back on the santa monica pier and he's done with the chess mask of course he lost and he's ready to go home um him being outside of the cities and you know stuff like that him being near the beach he has to get home in a different way basically just you know spider swing home on the back of a bus um while he's doing so he kind of like is watching the beach and stuff and he ends up seeing these three kids that are running from something he springs into action and sure enough it is a massive black bear he even kind of like confers with himself and like wait a minute black bears are supposed to be extinct in this area for a long long time like hundreds of years um but is it, it doesn't stop him from what what needs to be done he does end up taking out the black bear using you know just the webbing so he doesn't hurt the black bear there's also something to note he says that he's very sluggish but mentioned before he's been doing all-nighters and at this point he has not slept um, but I think they mentioned that for something else um, he does end up going home and at the moment he is staying with like two people I'm not very familiar with but it is Randy and it's the daughter of Tombstone um, I'm more familiar with her than the Randy character. And if I'm not mistaken, Randy's either Boomerang or Speed Demon. I can't remember. Correct me down below. Um, but anyways, that's who he's staying with. That's another part of the story that's not really explained. Um, I had to like double check to see if this was something that I was missing. But the story doesn't really explain that. It just kind of like sets it like he's either taking a vacation and they're allowing him to stay at this nice, really badass house on the Santa Monica you know cliffs right here um, but he goes back and he starts looking at the rock as soon as he starts touching the rock he is transported back to the dream world dream world where we see he's like stuck in this maze um, he does have the rock there in that dream world but as soon as he starts trying to like piece together what's going on this weird crow person with a huge revolver like instantly caps him to death and he wakes back up 
in the real world back in you know in the Santa Monica mansion or whatever and Randy and I'm so bad with name guys um, but basically Randy and the girl you know take him out to an extravagant kind of like you know artsy night on the town they end up going to this uh, it is an art exhibit and they meet this this lady who's hosting the um, the art exhibit and as he starts talking to her like briefly and her name is Janica but as soon as they you know Peter meets Janica and, and she kind of explains yeah these are all my exhibits he ends up looking in this spiral right here, this this art piece that she has, and she ends up explaining about the spirals, and, and it ends up triggering something that he had about the scientific experiment that he's been doing with uh, Crystal back in the lab. So he ends up taking off. He just, he just jets out. He doesn't say bye to Randy and, and the other girl or Janica. He just says, hey, thanks, Janica, for you know hitting me on something. On the way back, he ends up running into an L.A. copper, L.A chopper and he makes this big deal about like he's never actually been able to had the chance to outrun the famous LA choppers they're used to like high-speed chases and blah, blah blah so he takes the opportunity to take the chopper on the race um, <clears throat> during the race it ends up getting to the point where he can't really dodge the chopper like he wants to so he ends up finding like a fire exit door that he's drawn to and you can see right here it's got this spiral like the girl was talking about but he's drawn to the the door and he eventually makes it to the door as soon as he makes it through the door he is teleported and now he's in some kind of stadium um while he's at the stadium there's cops everywhere trying to you know take him down we see the cops quickly turn into these weird like creepy monsters i don't even know how to explain what they are but they like turn into you know they merge into two and split in half and there's teeth everywhere um, so Peter basically gets the heck out of there um, as he is like swinging we do see that like at first it's like regular Peter as you can see up here but as he's swinging and stuff we see that the demon you know deadly neighborhood spider-man thing comes out he ends up taking a pit stop and he ends up running into this weird looking frog and snail he even kind of explains that it can't be his imagination because his imagination would be better than just the, the, the frog and the snail. He ends up like fighting them for a second, getting covered in all this like crazy goo um, right there. On the next page, he ends up getting teleported to another room that's basically filled with all these monsters and stuff. He eventually leads to another door and he ends up coming out like uh, back where he needs to be you know <laughs> at the experiment with crystal um, at this point it's kind of a little weird because during all this he had made a phone call to crystal saying he had figured it out you know from that art from Janica's art exhibit that he had figured out the final like piece to the puzzle that they needed for the experiment as he is entering this room in the you know where he needs to be with the experiment crystals kind of saying that she figured out and she never got any kind of message from him or anything um, but basically that she's already figured out she's about to start the experiment she basically presses the button right in front of him we see that all of a sudden there's some commotion in the water all of a sudden like a water sprout starts up and then something comes out of the water a big massive claw and on the next page we see that it is none other than demon bear that comes out of the water sprout like they summoned him um, and that is the end of the issue we do get a badass um, preview of the second cover for issue two um, now with that son and dead now with that you know done I want to go back into that I think this whole time he's been stuck in this you know dream world reality whatever it is with demon bear demon bear kind of showed up halfway with the weird black bear thing but I think like maybe they've already done the experiment and this is kind of the him fighting the demon bear he just doesn't know he's doing it yet um, those are kind of my thoughts on where we are right now um, 
but as far as I know this is going to be a three issue series it might be a little longer don't quote me on that but I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out what's going on pretty quickly it might be like the very last issue that we get the whole but that's kind of my thoughts when you read the book it kind of feels like that like from the very get-go he doesn't know what's going on he's mentioning things about feeling sluggish um, the way he's being teleported back and forth the whole like non explanation on why he's staying where he's staying but guys these are my thoughts let me know your thoughts down below what you think about this first issue I'm gonna do a big one my friend Brian LCS also did a review on this book he had some great thoughts that that I did not think about and you know some great thoughts that you might have not think about so go check out his review um, I'll have the link down below. But guys, that's my my whole review for this. I won't keep you any longer. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me down below what you thought. If you didn't pick it up, why you didn't. Um, but I was totally down for our deadly neighborhood Spider-Man. Come on, Evil's Comics. I couldn't pass this up. But hey, that's from my review, guys. I'll let y'all go. And I will see y'all next time. Bye!